hey, are you coming up to the radio telescope this Saturday? Oh, yeah, I should be free that night. Oh, well, we'll be up during the day. We want to get there at around 10 in the morning, and we should be back at 8. <laughs> are you doing, like, solar observations? No, it's the Astronomy Club project. We're probing molecular cores. And you can see them during the day? Well, not with our eyes, but they emit radio emission, which we can detect. Oh, I guess I don't know that much about telescopes. I just know we have the 16-inch and the 21-inch on campus. Well. Yeah, this is an optical telescope, and it's definitely what most people think of when they think of astronomy. But there's all different types of astronomy. You can kind of think of it as the study of light from our universe. And the light we see with our eyes is visible light. But you can study the universe using the entire electromagnetic spectrum. So that means using infrared? Definitely. What about gamma ray astronomy? Yep. Ultraviolet? Absolutely. Any wavelength you can name, there's a telescope probing the universe in that wavelength. That's so cool. That's right. My favorite is radio astronomy for many reasons. But one cool thing about radio astronomy is that it can happen pretty much 24-7. That's really nice, so you don't have to stay up crazy late hours to see anything. Well, it totally depends on the time of year and the object that you're looking at. So for us, our object is rising at around 10 in the morning. But come in like four months, and we'll have to get there at 2 in the morning. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. So what kind of images do you get from radio astronomy? Images are overrated. We get spectra. Like this. Uh, that's fun. That's right. You know what's even more fun? The dish we get to use. It's huge. You have to check it out. And if we're lucky, the telescope operator will let us go into the heart of it. The dish? So in radio astronomy, we'll either use a single dish or an array of radio dishes to make our observations. We don't use a mirror or a CCD like in optical astronomy. We'll use these dishes and tune them to a certain frequency and point it at the object that we're looking at and measure the intensity of those frequencies. Oh, that's definitely not what I'm used to, but I'd love to check it out. Awesome! I can't wait to show you on Saturday. There's so many cool things about radio astronomy that people don't even know about. A lot of objects have been recently discovered using radio astronomy. Pulsars, for example, were discovered kind of by accident using radio dishes. The cosmic microwave background has been found and mapped throughout the entire universe and is a remnant of the Big Bang. And what we're doing is probing molecular cores to see where stars are being born and how they form. So what's it like to do radio astronomy research? Well... Welcome to Kitt Peak, on the land of the Tahano Otam Nation, about an hour's drive from Tucson. Up here, it's high and dry, and you can see in all directions. You can even see into mountaintops in Mexico. Kitt Peak is home to over 20 different telescopes and astronomers are able to peer into the universe with all different types of instruments. Some of the more famous ones are the dish that make up the very long baseline array, and the 4 meter male telescope, which you can see up on the peak. And my favorite, the 12 meter radio telescope, right down here. Now imagine you're a radio astronomer. You just woke up for your day shift and are leaving the dorms. Notice, it's daytime. The awesome thing about radio astronomy is that it can happen pretty much 24 hours a day. That is because the sun isn't a huge radio source to interfere with any observations you're making. This telescope can even observe objects while pointed almost directly at the sun, although that isn't super advised. Maybe you notice that it isn't super shiny like a mirror would be for an optical telescope. This is done very intentionally. It allows for the dish to be pointed near the sun without all the instruments melting. So after this short walk to the office, bam, there's the dish, all 12 meters in diameter, in its full glory. There's me for comparison. Fun fact about this dish in particular, the University of Arizona purchased it for $1. Did they find it in a dollar store? No. The dish was a test dish for the ALMA array, an array of telescope dishes located in Chile. After testing, the dish wasn't of any use for the actual ALMA array, so the U of A bought it for super cheap and had it shipped up here. 2015 marked the first year that it was fully operational. Okay, now we're back to walking into the control room, where the astronomers and telescope operator do their work. For this telescope, there are professional operators whose job it is to make sure everything runs smoothly, and they follow any directions that the astronomers have for their research. Oftentimes, astronomers won't even come up to the telescope. 
They can sit around in their pajamas at home and observe remotely. Astronomers from all over the world get to use this telescope, mainly European and University of Arizona astronomers, which is why remote observing can be so nifty. Now we just enter through this door and up some stairs and we'll see the dish. There's a ton of hardware about and construction vehicles. There's a lot that goes into maintaining a dish like this. On the left side is a control room, and the telescope operator works in there the whole time, controlling the dish completely with computers. And that's the 12 meter radio telescope. Being at and exploring the telescope is one of the more fun parts of astronomical research. In my limited experience, I find radio astronomers to be super chill and interesting people. And as you can tell, I can take myself very seriously when here, and I always have fun when I come up here. Of course, that's just a taste of radio astronomy. I'd be amiss if I didn't mention what radio astronomers do for the most part. Before getting to the telescope, you first have to apply for time on it. That means spending time writing telescope proposals. If you get the time, you get to hang out at a cool telescope. Yay! But with that comes a lot of data reduction and analysis. Hopefully, you spend your time well and things go smoothly when you're there, and you'll have lots of new, soon-to-be-discovered information hiding in your data. And after you get all the time you need on the telescope and you reduce all of your data and you find out some cool stuff, you get to write a paper and add to the scientific community. And then you just repeat the process. Thanks for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. We put out videos every other week, so subscribe to stay updated. If you like this video, you should really check out our sing-along song that we made about the HR diagram, linked right here. Or you can check out the video that we're going to put up in the next two weeks, which will be a link right up here. Or you can click my face to subscribe to this channel. Click my face! See, I'm having a lot of fun. This is how much fun you'll have if you subscribe.